what's going on guys john here with live the creed today we're over at cabela's here in boise idaho and we wanted to go show you guys what kind of first aid options they have in store and compare that against what you can get with us and so we're going to go ahead in there purchase some and then take them back and take a look at like what kind of injuries they can treat if you were to buy that and go out on a hunt in the back country versus what you can get from us so let's head inside and see what they got Oh, this is like a mixed survival kit and emergency medical first aid kit. But it's just a first aid kit. There's nothing in here to get you home alive in a real emergency. All right, so I picked out two of the like closest items that, there's really not a ton of options, but these are kind of the two closest that might be, you might grab to be like, okay, I need a first aid kit and a trauma pack. Like that should be able to get me out of the backwoods alive um, from any injury. And so together, you know, you're looking at like 75 bucks. And so we're gonna take these, we're gonna purchase these, we're gonna take these back, and we're gonna take a look at what's inside and compare them to what we have in the expedition kit that we just launched. Um, so you can see what's a better value for your buck. And you know, if, if you come in here before a, a hunt or something and you're like, oh, I need a med kit. I'm gonna be way out in the backwoods. Let me grab one and you know, let's figure out if these can actually get you home from your trip in the event of a real emergency. All right, so we came to Cabela's today. We wanted to check out, you know, what kind of options they had as far as first aid kits and trauma kits for taking out on adventure. Cause let's face it, like most people are gonna swing by a Walmart or a Cabela's on their way out. Uh, like they're gonna go on a hunt or go camping or on an adventure. This is where you're gonna go. You're gonna grab some stuff for your trip, last minute things. And so we were pretty curious to like go shop the actual box store and say, hey, could you purchase a kit here that could get you home alive? Um, so we bought, we're gonna buy two and head back to the shop and go see what's actually in them, break them down, and uh, see, you go through a list of like common backcountry injuries and can these actually help you in the event of those? Uh, yes or no, you know, are you gonna live or are you gonna die? Let's go check it out. All right guys, so we're back from Cabela's. We ended up um, purchasing the trauma pack with Quick Clot and um, an adventure medical kit, um, Sportsman series says for two people up to four days. Um, so these were kind of really the only options they had. They had a bigger version of this, just with more stuff. Um, this was the only trauma type kit that they offered at Cabela's. Um, so we figured to kind of make a fair comparison with uh, the expedition kit that we just launched, um, we'd purchase both of these and uh, see if they could stack up to, to what we've built here for you guys. Uh, the total for these two um, came to $56. Um, and so I think the breakdown of that was like, it was like $29.99 or $25 and then $29.99 um, for this guy. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of take a look at them and go over some common backcountry injuries and then also like what life, potential life threatening injuries you might have in the backcountry. And w you know, if you went and purchased these at Cabela's, would these actually help you? So let's start with uh, the trauma pack. So this is by Adventure Medical Kits as well. Um, it's advertised, you know, looks like like trauma kit. So let's see what they got. All right, so getting into it, everything's nicely organized and packed in here. Um, okay. So immediately, if, if I'm having like this, this kit in itself would be for like, you have, you cut yourself really badly, you have a, a major bleed, um, or you have an arterial bleed where, you know, it's a life or death situation. So let's say you cut yourself, you're hatcheting, and your hatchet, you know, hits your leg and you're bleeding a lot. So you, you know, you rip open your trauma pack and you're like, okay, what do we got? So let's see. Because right now, immediately my first impression is, I don't see the tools that I need to, to save my life right now. Um, there, is no, there is no tourniquet in this kit um, or compression wrap or dressing. So that's number one. There's no tourniquet in here um, or anything that could act as a tourniquet. So got some duct tape. That's not gonna help you out. 
if you're bleeding out. Um, triangular bandage, nope. Some, some gloves, okay, those are always handy. Kind of annoying that they're in another little bag, but. Um, here is some rolled gauze, okay, so this could be used to, to pack an injury. Um, that's good. It's uh, three inches by four yards. And then, okay. So they, it comes with a little sheet and um, it tells you to wear gloves. Locate the wound and apply trauma dressing. Call 911. Step five, apply a tourniquet if available and needed. So let's, their step three is apply a trauma dressing. Let's see. We've got an abdominal gauze pad. We've got a four by four gauze pad. We've got some alcohol prep pads. <laughs> Here's another um, informational thing on how to apply a tourniquet. And this is using ropes, sticks, and the um, triangular bandage, which, you know, in an emergency, when if you already, if you have multiple injuries on someone and you used your tourniquet that you brought and you need to improvise, you can improvise a tourniquet. It's not gonna be as effective. It may or may not work, but you can try to improvise a tourniquet using a triangular bandage, but you're not gonna be doing that on yourself. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. <laughs> you're not gonna improvise a tourniquet on your arm um, while you're bleeding out. So it's kind of laughable that they keep, there's all these things about applying a tourniquet, but there's just no type of tourniquet in here. Um, and then, <laughs> so this is kind of laughable as well. <laughs> the, the only hemostatic gauze you have is this little, let's see, it's a one sterile Z-fold clotting gauze, three inches by two feet. All right, let's take a look. So you do have, okay, it is a Z-folding packing gauze. It's, to be honest with you, it's, um, it's not much. You're not, if you have a real injury that needs to be packed, this isn't really gonna get it done. But you could um, obviously start with this, the hemostatic one, and then backfill it with uh, the roller gauze. So, so you have some packing capabilities in here. Um, on the injury like we were looking at, like where you hatcheted your leg and you're bleeding out, this is, you need a tourniquet um, to be able to stop the bleeding. And there's nothing in this kit that's gonna allow you to apply pressure either. Um, to apply pressure over, let's say it's just a, it's like a, a laceration on your arm. It's not life or death. Um, you pack it, there's, there's nothing here to wrap it, to secure it. So you have a compression bandage, uh, like an Israeli style bandage. So you could, you know, move or hike out or whatever. So I have to say, if you have this kit in a life or death situation, you're probably gonna die. <laughs> and you know, as someone who's in Cabela's and you see this, you're like, man, this is gonna help me out if I'm in a serious traumatic situation where I, you know, I'm, where I need to stop bleeding fast. This is gonna stop little bleeding fast. This is not gonna save your life. Um, so it's pretty unfortunate to see that this is the only option um, for a trauma kit in Cabela's, especially when you're talking about hunters who are out there with broadheads, um, rifles. I mean, these kind of things do happen. Hunters stab themselves in the legs with broadheads. Um, when skinning game, it's common to cut your hands badly with razor sharp blades. Um, there are definitely times during hunting season where fortunately someone shoots another person. Um, those things do happen and if I pick this up thinking that it's gonna be good for going out rifle hunting and something terrible happens, this kid is not gonna be able to, to get me or my child or my friend out of the wilderness alive. So uh, let's take a look and, and you know, since we are talking about a combined kit, like combining these two, let's see if there was anything in here that could help us um, stop massive bleeding. Well, actually, you know, I don't, I'll, I'll, we'll open it to look at some other things, but um, if we're looking at the back here, there is no tourniquet in here and there is no more um, compressed gauze or anything like that. So, or any Israeli style bandage in here. 
Um, so combined between these two, you would not be able to stop um, massive hemorrhage. Let's talk about the, the other types of major injuries that are common in the backcountry. So the next one up would be like a broken bone. Um, so let's see if they have any splinting or anything like that between the two kits. Let's see. Okay, so inside of this bag is oh, another bag. Bags inside of bags. And this, um, I don't know if you can see it, but man, it's just a, it's just a lot of stuff. Try to keep this organized for you guys so you can kind of understand what goes with what. Okay, hey, we've got syringes. Wow. Okay, it's gonna take a second to uh, organize this. So if I had an emergency, I would, this would just get dumped out all over the place. There's not really much organization going on here. There is a first aid guide. Some more gloves, some med tape, it is handy. Um, a tick remover, okay. A pencil. Um, here's some pills. Let's see. They got Dyphen, they've got ibuprofen, aspirin, kind of your run of the mill, standard uh, OTC over the counter pill loadout. Okay, so. That's good to see. Obviously, uh, another common uh, thing you find in the backcountry is like heart attacks um, or allergic reactions. So you do have aspirin in here, um, which, you know, follow the directions, but you can um, use this to help um, prolong the time you have to get someone to a higher level of care who, who may be showing symptoms of a heart attack. Um, uncoated aspirin. And then obviously in the event of an allergic reaction, you have a Dyphen, which is like your, you know, standard allergy um, relief type pill. Um, so that's good to see. That's not going to be, it's not going to be the equivalent of like having an EpiPen or something, but to help slow the spread of the allergic reaction, you could give that. Uh, obviously follow the directions. Those are drugs. You need to follow the directions. Um, okay, we got some, some band-aids, little butterfly band-aids. Um, some triple antibiotic ointment, okay. And then here, and this is a bunch of different um, gauze pads and gauze sponges. Not None of them are hemostatic. They're just your regular gauze pads, which is fine for, you know, your regular first aid uh, injuries and boo-boos. There's some moleskin for um, blisters and stuff, which is, you know, all, really when you're going through this, what you'll see is that this whole kit it's a bunch of comfort items. So, and then maybe up to like a small, you know, knife cut or something. But there is definitely nothing in either of these kits that's gonna help you out to help you splint a fractured bone or sprain. Um, you do have a triangular bandage in the trauma pack, but you know, that you could, you know, sling an arm that way. Um, obviously, you need to come up with a way to splint it. Um, it. Usually you splint it and then you put a sling on it. So you don't have anything to deal with a broken bone or a fracture in here um, to actually splint it. You don't have anything to deal with major bleeding um, or major trauma. So obviously you do have a lot of the little first aid boo-boo components, which is fine. Um, I think. I made a list of the common backcountry injuries. So the, the next item on like the common list of injuries is burns. So um, I don't see any burn gel in here. Um, so that's kind of a bummer because that is a common injury. Obviously, you're, you know, having fires and things like that. Uh, hypothermia. So obviously people getting extremely cold. Um, there's no emergency blankets in either of these kits. And I'm just running through the list of like common backcountry injuries. So 
those were kind of the the main the main common ones. And then um, as far as another life-threatening emergency, uh, we talked a little bit about it, but heart attacks, and then obviously having to do CPR. So, uh, like I said, they do have aspirin. There's no CPR face shield or anything like that um, in here to, to do, you know, mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Obviously, um, it's the standard for CPR has changed, and it's just um, compressions now. But if you're out in the backcountry um, with that prolonged time, um, it would be nice to have the option. So now that we've kind of looked at these kits, you can tell that despite having spent you know 56 bucks, there's and, and having two separate kits, there's not really anything in here to help you in a true emergency. There's a lot of comfort stuff. Um, there's even instructions on you know, how to apply a tourniquet. But none of that's provided to you. Uh, and in a real emergency, I, emergencies happen like this. The few times that I've had to use our kits, um, it, it comes at a time when I'm just like with my kids out doing something and then all of a sudden, in the blink of an eye, you know, there's a lady bleeding out of her head because she fell down and whacked her head on a rock going fishing. So it just happens like that. And, and so to, to imagine that you're gonna improvise in that situation with without really much training is a pretty ridiculous concept. So it's kind of absurd that they put these in there. But um, let's take a look at what's in the expedition kit now, kind of show you guys how we've built what we feel is like the premier, you know, budget friendly outdoor adventure kit um, that you can throw in your bag and take with you anywhere and, and be covered for all these life threatening emergencies. Um, yeah, because, because when you go into Cabela's, you want you know you want to be able to grab something and know that you're covered. And fortunately, even if you buy these two separate kits and combine them together, you still don't have life-saving power in your kits. So I'm going to clear this off, and we're going to take a look at the expedition kit and see what's in there. I'm sure a lot of you guys watching, if you're hunters and stuff, you probably have one of these kits. They're really common. They're all over Amazon and in Cabela's, Walmart's. And so we need to change that as a company, Live the Creed, like. We want to make first aid, first aid kits, I'm just gonna use that term because that's commonly known. We want to make kits that actually, yeah, they have all the, the stuff, the comfort items, but in the event of a real emergency, which is what you're carrying this stuff for, you can actually help yourself. Because it's great to have all the, all the fluff and you know comfort stuff, but when it comes down to it, you want the stuff that's gonna get you home alive, back to your family, be, allow you to hike out miles from where you got in, you know? Um, so let's take a look at the expedition kit. All right, so this is our offering. Um, it's not available in any Cabela's or Walmarts or anything like that yet. We're trying to get it up on Amazon. It's been a bit of a struggle, but we're gonna get it figured out. Um, so the combined total of those two kits was $56. Um, ours is coming in at $69.99, but just gonna, you're gonna, we're gonna open it up and take a look and you're gonna understand why. Um, there's that slight price difference. Um, Obviously, you're also supporting an American company, which is cool. So, um, but let's take a look and, and you'll understand why there's that price difference and how that small amount of money um, can actually provide you the important items that you need in your kit to get you home. So, you know, similar Mylar bag pa packaging. Um, got the list of contents on the back. It's a uh, resealable zipper, so you can get in and out of it. So obviously we chose this kind of packaging for our outdoor kit to keep the, the price reasonably low, um, budget friendly, so that way this kit's available you know, to a wider range of people. So obviously with that comes a lack of organization. It's harder to organize. Okay, so. All right, let's just kind of break it down. So first off, everything's not all loose. Um, you've got everything kind of separated. So in here we have all your first aid items, all of your comfort first aid items. So it's all contained in this little baggie. If you want your band-aids, um, your OTC meds, um, a tampon for the ladies, some bacitration, you know, um, antibiotic ointment, all that kind of stuff's in here and we'll, we'll go into that. But let's talk about the life-saving stuff real quick and the common injuries. So. Right off the bat, boom, you open this up, you've got a 
SWAT T tourniquet, which can be used both as a tourniquet and as a um, compression wrap. So you can combine uh, the SWAT T with either a regular compressed gauze or we do include the quick clot bleeding control dressing um, as well, which is three inches by four feet compared to what we have over here. We had three inches by two feet. So you've got twice as much, over twice as much gauze um, in here with the hemostatic gauze that can help create a clot when you pack it. So you can pack a wound with either one of these or both of them and then apply this um, on top of it as a compression wrap to keep the pressure on and stop the bleeding, okay? Or this can be used standalone as a tourniquet. So you have a multifunctional device here that can, in the event of massive bleeding, allow you to you know, control it and move and get out alive, okay? Because you can bleed out in three minutes or less. So having these items on you um, is essential. So when you've got your life-threatening trauma covered, let's talk about broken bones real quick. So we do have a full 24-inch aluminum splint padded and moldable aluminum splint in here. So common, you know, sprains, fractures, breaks, got you covered with that, with a full splint. Really important item to have for the back country. And then we're talking about hypothermia and, um, you know, being able to warm yourself or in the event of shock, needing to keep your patient or yourself warm. Um, emergency blanket that is included in our kit as well. Um, not found in either of these two. Duct tape is super handy. Um, we have a, a large roll of duct tape. I don't, I don't, you know, size, size matters, I think. And uh, of course, uh, we have a heavy duty pair of nitro gloves, the Bear Claw nitro gloves. And then of course, yeah, we do have some um, gauze sponges, gauze pads for those smaller injuries. All right. And going over here to the first aid kit, um, you know, it's talking about heart attacks again, or chest pain. We do have uh, aspirin as well. We have um, ibuprofen and diphen for those allergic reactions. Like I said, the tampon is not in here for bleeding control of like a traumatic injury. It is here for women. Um, that is one of the most requested first aid items and that's why we put it in our kits. It's not to plug a gunshot wound. That is not why it's in our kits. <laughs> Please don't do that. Use the proper tools that we've provided over here. Um, we do include a CPR barrier face shield. Oh, you know what? Uh, one of the other items that we talked about was burns and there is nothing to treat burns in either of the other two kits that you can get from Cabela's and we do include two packs of uh, water gels, burn gel. Um, and this, honestly, I use this on my kids for like mosquito bites as well, or bug bites, and it does help reduce uh, the inflammation and itch. So burns, bug bites, this is the stuff, some jam. Use that quite often. Um, some antibiotic gel. Oh, there wasn't any tweezers or anything to get out uh, splinters, and we do have a splinter out for you guys. The other thing that we have in here that's um, important for like, you know, clean cuts or with a knife or something is uh, steri strips, wound closure strips. Um, you can use those basically instead of like suturing, using a suture kit in the backcountry, which most people don't know how to sew themselves up. Um, you can use steri strips to pull the skin together, and um, this is like really strong adhesive. It's going to keep the skin closed tight. Um, that way, it can heal, you know, with a minimal scar. So these are super important to have, and I don't know that I saw these in any of these kits as well. Um, they do have, I guess they have a butterfly bandage, which, which is all right, um, but they're not as strong adhesively um, to hold the skin super taut like the wound closure strips, which were specifically designed for that. So. Of course, then we do have um, some large band-aids, um, your alcohol wipes, uh, iodine, some Purell hand wipes, and some little one by three band-aids as well. So, fairly similar on the comfort items. Um, got you covered there for all your little injuries, bumps and scrapes. 
When it comes to life-saving stuff and the most common backcountry injuries, these kits are not gonna help you out. For a little bit extra money, we've got tourniquet and pressure dressing bandage, as well as um, more hemostatic gauze from Quick Clot, a full brick of compressed, you know, sterile cotton gauze, an emergency blanket for hypotherm hypothermia or shock, and then a fully moldable aluminum padded splint uh, for those fractures, breaks, and sprains. So, look guys, we designed this kit as um, something that's fairly budget friendly. Um, you can throw it in your backpack, in your hunting pack, um, in the car, just so you can always have peace of mind when you're going out on any adventure. You can just take this and throw it wherever you're going in the back of your UTV or on your ATV. Um, and know that you're covered for the most common injuries in the backcountry. Thanks for watching, checking it out guys. If you like what you're watching, hit the subscribe button. We appreciate the support. And uh, we're gonna do more stuff like this. So we'll see you on the next one.